Everyone has their own taste and I get that, but if you only find the absolute dime pieces attractive, it's because you're filling your brain with shit. You're watching too much porn, you're watching too many girls on TikTok and Instagram shaking their ass. Because now your standard for who's good looking is way out of proportion and it will fuck you up. And the ironic part is, most of these dudes that are saying, meh, she's not cute, meh, she's not cute, are all the same dudes who are virgins and have never been in relationships before. It's not a coincidence. It's not. If you find yourself in this position, and I'm talking to you motherfuckers, if you find yourself in this position where you're a young man and you don't find any women attractive anymore, unless they're the one, you gotta look at what the fuck you're putting in your brain. Mr. Borst, good to be back. Yes, sir. In the room with your cute ass. Yes, sir. Welcome back to episode number three of the consistent dual episodes. <laughs> Four. This, this may be uh, our new uh, platform. New trend. Yeah, but also, like, the thing that I'm thinking about is, like, who gives a fuck? Mm. Like, like what, no, no, once once it turns into, once it turns into, like, a, a business, it, yes, that's a, that's its own thing. Yeah. But, like, it's just going to reach more eyeballs. Yeah. Like, it's going to turn from 30 eyeballs to 60. Like, yeah. 100%. Yeah, once we're monetizing and stuff like that, for it's sure. Different. But it's, you know, it's both of us. Just and easier for the yes. time that we're in. And I'm editing it, so, like, I and God damn. All right. <laughs> Deuces, we're going back to the OG mic. Cool. cool. Splendid. You're fire. Fuck. What's up, though, man? So, so, topic of the day. I, um, we had a business meeting before this. It's weird you can call it a business meeting. It is a yeah, business meeting. Is. Um, and uh, I was running late, but it was for a good reason. I was, I was, I don't know, of you know, someone, someone needed help, and it was more important. At least I thought it was more important for me to not cut this person short in our phone conversation because he needed my help. And I was like, you know what? If I'm late, because I, I needed a shower, I was just gonna shower and leave. I had time to get my oil changed and then come. Like I had literally an hour, and I was like, if I'm late, like it's fine. I was like, I'm just gonna shower and go. I was like, but he called me, and I was like, "It's I, no business meeting is, is going to take precedent over this right now because he needs me. He needs me. And, and, and I was thinking about it. I'm like, yo, looking back on in hindsight, I'm going to look back if I'm like, listen, man, like I would love to help you through this situation, but I have a business meeting to go to. And I'm like, what kind of person does that? Like, what, what, what is that about? Anyways, after I got off the phone with him, I texted you. I was like, listen, I might be running late. It's for a good reason, but I'll I'll see you. And then you just said, I don't even know what you said. You said, basically, you're like, all good. <laughs> Excuse me. You were like, it's fine. You're like, it's all good. You didn't even question what was going on. You didn't, you had no idea. I didn't even give you context because I was just like, I got to shower and go. But I was like, you just didn't even question it at all. I'm sitting there and I'm like, yo, like, <laughs> this fucking dude, like, you're my fucking, you're my boy, man. It's. It's a, me, <laughs> you're my boy too, man. Hundred percent. Because, like, bro, like, I don't. I just feel like looking at the way that most people interact with one another. My normal conditioning is to think that I need to explain myself. I need to explain what I'm doing and yeah. why, because most people are going to want to question why I'm running late and if it's a valid reason or not. Or you know, how could you show up late to a business meeting when you knew we were doing like you didn't? It wasn't. It was nothing. And I was like, he fucking, he trusts me. Like, you, you, you trust me. Like, I'm not sitting there fucking <laughs> twiddling my dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I am late because of something stupid, I'm just going to own it. Yeah, yeah. And you can trust that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. But our trust whole things. relationship, business-wise, personally, everything is just based on the truth. Yeah. And it, without that, you don't have anything good. Mm. I'm like, this is why we can be so good with one another. And like, it, like when, when we were talking about what we were talking about before, immediately I think about Alex and I'm like, yeah, like any time he's out of pocket with something or any time I ask him to hang out and he doesn't want to hang out, he knows he can literally say to me and will say to me, I don't want to do anything with anyone today. I just don't feel like hanging out with anyone today. Yeah. And he th that happens all the time. He's introverted. I'm extroverted. So, of course, it's going to happen. Yeah. He's going to text me plenty of times like, no, nah, I just don't want to. I don't have the social battery right now. I'm his best friend. <laughs> of course. Yeah. It's going to like be like, well, like I want to <laughs> hang out. But... Our relationship is built on the truth and the raw truth. Yeah, yeah. And even though he knows sending that text is going to make me feel like, fuck this dude. <laughs> like, obviously not. But <laughs> no, you get what I'm yeah, saying? In the moment, yeah. But like, okay. it, he, he, he has, he feels like he has the space to say it. Yeah. So he does. 
And as a result of that, our relationship flourishes. And there's no bullshit problems that snowball into an oblivion yeah. because we feel like we can't tell each other the truth. So we dance around it. And then I catch him lying indirectly. And then he catches me lying indirectly. And it just fucking snowballs yeah, into yeah, something yeah. stupid. It's like mm-hmm. none of that ever happens because yeah, yeah. we just tell each other the truth. And that's why I thought about that. And I was like, yo, like I'm fucking grateful as fuck to have you, my guy. Like, that, man. I've been thinking like every single time. The same I, way. The same every single way. time I post something on, on the gram now, like especially like looking back contextually, like if I'm clipping something up from a podcast, I'm like looking, I'm like, yo, motherfucker, like I don't even know what I would do without you in my life, my man. Dude. I mean, just I, I mean we, we, I feel like we talk about this like every every yeah. single week. Literally. <laughs> I'm always like, you're my fucking dude. I love you. I love you, like, I, love you I, I was literally, like, yeah. I was literally like, like, I fucking love you. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I think like the fact that you even recognize that, like who is recognizing that? Like, I can count on one hand. Yeah. <laughs> How one, many people one in, finger. <laughs> in all of the world? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but I can tell you there's probably very few people that even recognize the value in that one text, right? Like, oh, it's all good, right? Like, I didn't text your mom happy birthday. I'm so sorry. You know, thanks. I don't, okay, to be fair, I don't know what's up with the whole, like, I can't accept a compliment thing. Like, I just don't, I don't know yeah. why. Because I feel like you, you like, it's now turned into a joke and I'm like, ha, ha, ha. It is, it is kind of funny, but like, well, I like, mean, why? I don't know. I feel like. Why? That might be something we can explore a little bit more, but I heard an interesting perspective yesterday about that. Like, mm. when, when someone gives you a compliment, how the person described it, I forget who it was, um. But they said, when someone gives you a compliment, it's like a gift. And so when they give you a gift and you're just, you just shrug it off, you're just throwing the gift right back at them, right? Like, so how does that feel to the person when they give you a compliment? And then you, you're, you're super humble about it and you don't recognize its importance. You don't recognize how the value, the same value that they see, right? And, you know, depending on the compliment, depending on what it is, it's just like, you're not acknowledging that, right? And then what does that say to the other person? Do you think they're going to keep giving you those compliments when they know you're not going to accept them? Mm-hmm. Probably not. And so when I when I hear the, I mean, because I'm just like, a, people that know me, like I'm just kind of a guy that gives out like a ton of compliments. Like that's just how I am, right? Like, yeah. I mean, I'm not, uh, the reasons for doing that, like usually I feel like are pretty genuine and valid, but like I, I, I just genuinely like, just vocalize like I'm like, just compliment a lot of people and I just try and spread the love. Yeah. Spread the love. Exactly. Just try, just try and leave the conversation more positive than when I came into it. Right. Like, I love it. Like, it's not even like, it's not even like I'm I'm like, Oh, I'm going to try to make this more. You know what I mean? Like, that's just how I am. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, so, um, that was the first thing I noticed about you. That's the first thing I noticed about you. Cause I was on the shoulder press machine when Barnes introduced us to each other. And then you and I started talking and then I told you about my TikTok, and then I showed you and I showed you, like, I was at, like, 100-something thousand at that point. Uh-huh. And you were like, wow, that's fucking awesome. And yeah. I noticed the genuineness in your wow. face. And that almost never happens because there's usually saltiness or jealousy yeah, yeah, yeah. or something in there. And it was just pure, like, holy shit, good for you, bro. That's amazing. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> the fuck? I was like, that's, yeah, that was I real. Mean, I, yeah, I think I think it was real for the most part. Because after that, was like, I, I was still in a lot of ego at that moment. Because mm. um, I remember I walked out of there. I was like, fuck, this guy Jason's going to look at my content. He's going to think I'm fucking garbage. Like, <laughs> no, well, I also yeah. didn't know you, right? Of so course. I was just like, I was like, oh, fuck. I have like 100, I have like 270 subscribers. And like, this yeah. shit's going to be fucking ass. So yeah. I was like, that's what I was thinking, right? And I was yeah. just like. I don't know. That's just like I remember I was walking out and I felt yeah. that way. But I don't know. Like I was like I was like, oh my god, fuck, man, this guy's like legit, you know. So it's yeah. like, um, so yeah, no, I, I, it was externally, yeah, maybe it appeared genuine, but I remember it was like a little bit like I was still in that ego phase a little yeah. bit. Um, but yeah. Uh, anyways, but you're that person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moving yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyways, yeah, no, like, but like that's I'm a human being too. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I'm not fucking like. Super Cal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I don't want people to get that idea. Like, I have issues. I have problems, right? Like, yeah. people don't like... You know, I think that is important for you to yeah. say, especially, because, yeah. like, I'm... It's a little more evident with me because I'm extroverted, and, like, yeah. I'll go out, and I'll party, and I'll drink, mm-hmm. and I'll do stuff, and people are like, oh, like, he does stuff that's, like, normal, that, like, yeah, it's easier to label me as, like, he does... Yeah. He's disciplined, but also has his flaws. A lot of people look at you, and people like you and Joe, like, yeah. you're fucking Superman. And like not, you dude. kind of are, you kind of are, like mostly. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not. Like no, but yeah, so much for accepting a compliment, dude. No, I appreciate it. Thank you, seriously. Yes, though. but like, it's yeah, just I, yeah. you need to match the compliment to the reality, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because if you're just gassing me up, right, mm-hmm. you have no flaws. Putting me in Mr. Perfect box, like that's sh- like when I I remember I, I use this example all the time when someone like because I swear a lot, like I do, like that's just how I am. 
but when and like depending on the environment, right? Like, of course, if I'm at work, I'm not gonna be like fucking swearing up a storm, right? Fucking like, shit, fuck. <laughs> like, and so it, it makes sense, like you yeah. know, just habitually speaking, if someone doesn't hear me yeah. swear a lot and they hear me swear, right? It's gonna be abnormal, right? Like no doubt about that. But like for people that I'm regularly around. I remember, like, one time I was just, you know, I was on duty one night, and I was, like, I swore or something like that, and this girl goes, oh, Cal, you swear? Right? I was like, what? Like, I can't even swear? Like, come on. Dude. Like, you know, it just, uh, it, it's like, it feels like you can't do anything wrong, right? Like, wrong according to, like, oh, for instance, going out to party, going out to the bar, to hang out with friends. Like, that to me, like, and then you start to feel that way, yeah. right? And then you start yeah. to present yourself that way. Yeah. And it's like... When you put yourself in that box, man, yeah. you know, I mean, we've talked about this so much, right? Like you have to let your, like, you're going to not, you're going to so do weird. things that you don't want to do. I right? haven't even thought about that problem for you. Do you run into that a lot of like, I uh, used to a lot. I well, used to a lot. Well, when I met you, you've helped me tremendously break out of that. Like mm -hmm. it just, in terms of just, I think because the reason why I would stay in that box is because I, I was afraid and I still am afraid, mm -hmm. uh, just Kind of like when I'm verbally speaking to someone, like just me and you, right? Like, yeah. it, or not not me and you, but like to face to face with another person, like I will not talk about meditation, right? Like I will not talk about veganism, like I will not talk about like you know, and like if someone asks me about it, like and wants me to, like it takes a lot for me to get comfortable talking mm -hmm. about that stuff because I don't want them to feel uncomfortable, right? right? Like, and I will like conform my values to their values in order to satisfy yeah. the kind of peace in that relationship, yeah, right? Yeah. So what you help me a lot with was breaking out of that shell, both, um, I guess you could say, how people viewed me more generally, right? And kind of, but even though, like, I think it's, I was thinking about this yesterday, it's more so, <clears throat> it's more, because I, all, I, how I show who I am to people is just through my actions. Yeah. Like, you will not see me talk about my beliefs very openly. Yeah. Like, Obviously, fucking, I'm doing it right now, but like, <laughs> no, no, but I get what you're you know, like, like this is an action. What yeah. I'm doing right yeah, now, right? Yeah. It's more indirect, right? Yeah. So if someone sees me meditating outside, like, okay, then they see, right? Like, then yeah. they get it, right? Like, I'm yeah. not a person that's gonna like boost myself up and like maybe that's and like mm -hmm. kind of like oh, say I'm super hardworking, say I'm all this like right, like it's just I don't like that, like I don't like, and I get it. That might be a self esteem thing, like kind of not necessarily self esteem thing, but like more of uh like a humble kind of thing, right? Yeah. Um, which I I've been kind of towing the line about, like because. I think you should recognize your own importance. You should recognize your own value, right? And that's yeah. something that I am battling with, right? Yeah. Because I'm just like, it's the whole thing with the compliment, right? And it's like, I, I look if you look up the definition of of humble, right? It says like a low self esteem about one's own importance for the things that they've done. And I'm like, mm. fuck, right? Like yeah. you don't even think the things that you're doing are important. Yeah. Like that's an issue, yeah. right? Like if someone just says to you, like, damn, Jason, you're a hell of a life coach, and you're just like, yeah, I'm all right. What? Oh, Cal, you're pretty strong. Like, okay. Like, yeah. what does that say about yourself? What do you think of yourself? Yeah. And I don't know. The, the reason why I'm saying this is because, like, it definitely, I'm, like, I'm more and more coming to that realization mm -hmm. because I'm definitely, I've been stuck in the trap of, in, uh, especially with social media, and a lot of people know about this issue with me, yeah. is kind of getting in that kind of mindset of, like, oh, well, I'm the man. I'm the yeah. shit. Right. And then kind of upholding that yeah. image, right? I so feel like, I feel like it's hard for me to reconcile the fact that like I'm very afraid to let go of this crippling insecurity. Cause I feel like it's going to not, I feel like I know it contributes a tremendous amount to my success mm. personally. Uh, what anything is, business wise what is, sorry? crippling insecurity. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just cause like, I don't know. Like I, when I feel like I'm not good enough, it drives me to do more period. Yeah, dude. Fear of insufficiency. I texted right. you about that. Like that is yeah. my biggest motivator right. for sure, dude. For sure. So like, I don't know. So it, so it's like a part of me doesn't want to work on the fact that I don't know how to accept a compliment or a gift. When you said gift, I was like, I can't. I, gifts yeah, are yeah. hard for me, yeah. which, you know, my parents are going to listen to this and be like, that's funny you say that <laughs> because, you know, whatever. Bought you everything you own. Yeah, and, yeah, whatever. That's its own. Yeah, yeah. But case. no, I get what but, you're saying because yeah. it's like, because I think with you, like when it comes to accepting a compliment, right, it's like. Why, why do you think, like, when it, what, do you have any, gen, or do you have, like, no idea why it's hard for you to accept the compliment? Part of me hates the fact that growing up, my ego was so big that I want to play humble. Mm. I want to, I don't want to come across, I hate being perceived as the piece of shit. And so when I get a compliment, I want to, like, 
like just back away from it. I'm like, I, I don't like, I just don't like, don't say that to me. Like, I don't want, yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want anyone hearing you complimenting me and then seeing me like, like the compliment. Cause like, Oh yeah, there's Jason loving the attention, loving mm-hmm. getting praised and whatnot. And I'm like, I just don't, I don't want people to perceive me that way. The other part is like, maybe I just feel like I don't deserve it. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, do you think if that's like, if that's not the intention of, okay, let's just say you're like, you're in a room, right? And like, yeah. like someone in this room, right? They're just like, oh, Jason, I really like your pink sweatshirt, right? Like, and if they can tell that your, your intention, or is it your belief that their intention about you when you get that compliment is that you're using it for praise? Is that what you're kind of? Or praise or attention or things yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think I think I think it's like an understanding issue, yeah. right? Like so, like your understanding when it comes to like the people in the room, right? Mm-hmm. Like when they get what you believe they think when you get a compliment, right? So like the intention that they have when because like they see it. At, does that make sense or no? Yes. Okay. Okay. I know it's like fucking. No, no, no. I get yeah, what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, it's yeah. almost like it's like I I want to be perceived a certain yeah, way yeah, yeah, yeah. when I get complimented. Yes. Yeah. It's way easier said than I did. (laughs) Um, But do you think that's... I think it definitely is a big role. I think the other part is actually, like, I just feel like... A lot of times I just feel like I'm not a good person. Hmm. And, like, I know... I know it's not true. I'm I'm not fucking Jesus Christ. But, like, sometimes I just don't feel like, you know... You feel like your old self, kind of? Yeah. Mm. It's It's hard to kind of separate from that, you know? Like, so, like, what current things make you feel like that? Or is it just kind of, like, a spontaneous feeling? When I feel like I'm not a good person? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> habitual thought patterns. Like, mm. like, uh, like when I'm, like, if I look, like, I don't want to drop names because I can't. Oh, but, yeah. like, like, when you talk about somebody that's undisciplined and then I immediately think about, that person is just lazy. Yeah. You're just lazy. Like, I just, I can't relate to you. Yeah. Like there's, there's no empathy there. There's no understanding there. There's there's none of that. And so, looking back on that in hindsight, I'm like, I don't feel like I'm a good person because I feel like a good person would never look at someone and be like, you're just a lazy piece of shit. They'd be like, listen, like, a true understanding is understanding that if you were them, if you had their genetics and their upbringing and their experiences, you would be doing exactly yeah. what they're doing. Yeah. Therefore, if you had true empathy, you would never judge them. Yeah. Because you can't understand someone they and judge them yeah. at the same time. Yeah, yeah. And so when I'm sitting in a perspective where I'm like, you're just a lazy piece of shit or looking at it, so like, uh, here's a good example. Like, uh, this actually happened in the car. Me, you, and Delia were driving back from Chipotle and uh, this homeless person was on, on the side of the street and I, I don't know what the conversation was. I, it wasn't anything fallacious, but it was just like, it was very clear that you guys had much more empathy for the person than I did. And I was just like, I just, like, I sat there and I was like, I'm just not a good person. Like, I just remember having that thought. I'm like, I feel like I'm just not a fucking good person. Mm. A lot of that's probably your biology. A lot of that's probably your upbringing. Like there's just many things that play into it. And a lot of it's probably just the truth of like that person has probably gone through some horrible things like that. I can't even imagine. And if I was them, I'd be doing exactly what they're doing right now. And so then I look at that in hindsight, I'm like, yo, why was my initial thought to be like, if I were in your shoes, I would go knock on a hundred doors and try and get a job somewhere. And then, but just, I could probably, if, if I, you know, even if I was fucked up, I could probably land a job somewhere just because of my level of discipline and tenacious yeah. drive to just do anything and everything to make life happen. Like people don't have that, you know, like, and so it's easy for me to sit here on my fucking high horse, like, oh, I can do it. And there's yeah, a lot yeah. more that goes into being homeless than, than that. And I, I've never been homeless. Like how, how, who the fuck am I to even make that yeah, comment? yeah. yeah. But the initial thought was still there. And I'm just like, well, you know, those things like that, I'm like, why why should anybody compliment me? You know, or why do I deserve, like, why should I accept a compliment? You know, because like, like a lot of times, like, Gianna gave me a compliment. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, like, you don't know me. Like, thanks, but you don't, you don't know me. Like, getting compliment on the business. Oh, so, it th- okay, okay, okay. So it doesn't seem legit doesn't feel like I deserve it. Yeah. Just don't feel like I deserve it. Like if I get compliment on the business, I'm like, yo, we have, 
we don't have profit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. we will by the end of the school year, like, on the contracts. But, like, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what are you? So, it's like, what, yeah. what makes a compliment feel worth it then? Again, I, I think it's just a mental shift. No, yeah. Because, like, if someone calls Is me... Is it, like, all compliments just feel I, that way? Yeah, kind of, to be honest. Because, like, I'm, I, okay. that's what I'm running yes, through my head right now. I'm okay. like... Then that's, then, that's, then that's the issue. Yeah. Like, it's just your interpretation. Because people will, like, compliment me, uh, compliment me on my body. Yeah. Like, because I've been working out, especially after I started working on Matt. Yeah. Put on a little size. I look pretty athletic. Yeah, yeah. I don't feel that way. Because, like, I'll look... Like, again, like... I, I know, like, I know already <laughs> what you're going to be thinking because, like, I'm yeah. not a fuck... Like, I'm, I know, but, like, I look at Matt and I'm like, nah, look at me. Like, <laughs> I, it's funny. Like, I can't... Like, here's an actual... Oh, you're an actual fucking dog. Well, like, here's a uh, fact. I don't... Take because like I I try and take progress pictures every once in a while. I don't want Matt in the photo because <laughs> I feel like shit. Because like it also he, like a fucking bodybuilder. No, because like I'll look. I'll like, he's got fucking. If he did bodybuilding, he would fucking. Whoa, <laughs> so good, Matt. You should do bodybuilding, bro. Because I'll take a picture in the mirror, and he's like, like he'll be going to like pick up something off of his, like a gym bag, and his lats just fucking like. <laughs> It, like like his, that. That's and, what I'm saying. His unflexed arm is better than my flex. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, that's that's the goal. Having good unflexed arms. That's the goal. <sighs> but so. Anyways, sorry. I think moral <laughs> of the story is it's messy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's comparison, which yeah, yeah. everybody does. It's I feel like I don't deserve it. It's I don't want to seem like my past ego self full of, you know, full of myself and whatever. And, like, all these things kind of play yeah. into, like, me l- habitually rejecting any gift verbally or physically. And so anytime someone tries to tell me, like, dude, you're killing it, you're doing well, you should be proud of yourself about X, Y, and Z, it's like, y- inherently, yes, I have that initial feeling of, like, that feels nice, but I don't want to accept it because I feel like I just don't deserve it. And there's a lot of people out there that I know can relate to that, but I think the problem is, is, like, how do you get from point A to point B without getting your ego involved? How do you get from point A to point B without getting yourself in a position where you're not taking undue, you know, respect or undue compliments when someone maybe just doesn't even know you? Yeah. So I think <clears throat> at least like my initial thought when you said that, like how do you get to that point of like that nice feeling to it actually yeah. like feeling like worthy of it? Mm-hmm. I think, cause I think you have to overcome your conditioning. That's the biggest thing for yeah. sure. And I think, I think just taking as up, just like, obviously it's not easy. Like we're fucking subjective beings, right? Like with like emotions and feelings and all this stuff that puts us in certain mental states where we can't just be robotic objective man, right? Like, <laughs> but, but like if you could, like when you do get a compliment, like if you can be just like when you're super mindful, right? Like you take like a super mindful look at your, you just have like an overview of your internal state mm. and then you feel that like you feel that nice feeling but then you're just like oh fuck like shh, chill like and then you kind of maneuver your way through that situation right mm-hmm. like and then you start to compare what they said to how reality uh-huh. actually is right and so i think at least in theory and what i at least from what i i think would happen right like i feel like over time if someone for instance is like dude you're killing it with the business which we objectively are for the point that we're at like yeah. i feel like we're doing it just, <laughs> even that i'm yeah. like <laughs> I, but it's also the perspective you yes, take, yes, right? Yes, it's also yes. the perspective you take. I'm like, fucking stupid. Well, I get you know, it, I mean, dude. Pure, point blank period. It's all about the perspective you have, right? Yeah. Because it's like you could look at someone like, you, like for instance. Uh-huh. I mean, this is the perspective that I take because people that don't work out, they'll look at me and they'll think I'm fucking huge, yeah. right? Like, and then I look at someone like Matt yeah. or my buddy Josh, yeah. who's oh my. Homie is gonna be on the Olympia stage in a few years. Like, holy shit! I mean, dude has—I don't even know—he's been working out for like a little longer than I have, and he is just—I'm not—I'm pretty sure he's still natty. Um, no, he—I—I I don't know, I don't know. But even if he isn't, like, he has the physique to step on, like, make wow. the Olympia. I think at least. I mean, it's—it's it's incredibly competitive, and you have to be in the point zero one percent of genetics. But goddamn, he has it. But anyways, um, if someone looks at like, if I work out with him, mm-hmm. it's just like what you were saying, right? Mm-hmm. Like, he is. Way bigger than me. And his physique, my physique will never look as good as his, no matter how hard I train. Mm -hmm. Right. And so it's just like if someone, if you're in that kind of mental state where you're, where you think the mountain is Josh or Matt, and you're just the kind of pebble on the ground, right? Of course. It's someone, if, if Jimmy comes up to you and it's like, damn, damn, Jason, like a Matt standing right next to you, damn, Jason, you're looking big. My definition of big in that instance is Matt. Mm, Right. 
But if you shift that perspective, shift the definition to yeah. be like, no, like big for me is, for me, yeah. is me. Yeah. Right. Like then that compliment will probably feel a lot better. Yeah. Right. So I think it's, it's really just that perspective. How would you reconcile that with the whole, cause like, I do believe in this. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know if you believe in this, but I'm a firm believer in like, and it's kind of sick. I get it. But like, I'm also kind of a firm believer in it. Like I can't even, I'm not even yeah, yeah. in a front reconciling that with having crippling insecurity be a major driver to becoming successful. Yeah. I mean, well, I also, I mean, I texted you the other day, like, yeah, like my major motivator is the fear of being insufficient. Yeah. Like it 1000% is. And I really recognize that in the Alex Ramosi right. short that I sent you because it's like yeah. when, when, the only reason why I'm trying super hard in res life right now, mm -hmm. right, is because of that. Yeah. Like, my fear is to be looked down upon. Yeah. My fear is to be inad inadequate. Like, if I'm not, it's like, if I'm not in the top 1% yeah. of that, like, that's a problem. Like, yeah. they, like, and that, that's what I feel, right? And like, that's why you're my fucking boy, dude. <laughs> that sentence right there. Yeah, like, like, that's real, though. I know. It's I, real, like, That's though. just how I've always been, right? And it's just real. like, maybe not always been, but at least in the past five to six no. years, right? And it's just like, even like when it came to school, right? Like I would always say I would do things in itself for itself, but why was I doing things in itself for itself? Because I was, I had a fear of not doing good enough, right? And it's like, I think Alex Ramosi put it really great. He's like, do people have, are, are people going after things because they want to fulfill their potential yeah. or are they doing things because they fear insufficiency? It. It's the fear. It's it. it is the fear. Everything's always the inverse. Oh, like yeah, like the same thing with like, me being so fucking competitive. Like, it, it doesn't matter where I'm placed. Like, I don't have an off switch. Yeah. There's no off switch. Yeah. I, what am I supposed to do about that? Like, turn your, like, remove the light switch from your brain of being competitive and non-competitive, and then yeah. you'll be successful? Like, how do I say that? I think you have to have more being in your doing. That's the thing, mm. right? Because you're, you could still do all the things that you're doing, yeah. right? Right? But you're yeah, but how? you're super attached to them. Or that's how? that's the problem, right? So like that's the state I'm in, right? Yeah. And when I do things, right, like I don't mm -hmm. feel a lot of attachment when it comes to the business, right? Yeah. But I get I get these like motivating factors yeah. of like a fear of insufficiency, yeah. right? It's just a feeling, right? Yeah. It's not I'm not like oh fuck twenty four seven, right? Like yeah. like I don't feel that pressure twenty four seven, right? And it might be different for you, yeah. right? Because I feel like you have that pressure, you place that pressure on yourself. All yeah. the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bingo! Oh, oh, it's man, always just here. Just like, but that's not how things should be, right? It's yeah. like a balance. It's mm. like yin and yang, right? It's yeah. like you can still it. You there's like it, there's a time and place for that fear, right? Because like yeah. when you're starting to like, okay, let's just say you have shit to do, right? And then you yeah. lay down, and you're like, oh, brother, why are we laying down? Yeah. All right, like you know what you should be doing right now, right? Yeah. But then when that gets you back into place, when you yeah. start to edit, when you start to do all these different types of things, yeah. that's when you enter that being state, right? Oh, it's yeah. just like it's utilizing that fear in the right way as fuel to get to you to get you to do the things that you need to do. Yeah. But the the question is like, like I don't know what I'm supposed to tell you, like. When you lay down and open up TikTok to scroll through mindlessly, get the voice in your head that's telling you you're a lazy piece of fucking garbage to get your ass up and do yeah, the things yeah. you know you're supposed to do. How am I supposed to tell you to be that and have yeah, that yeah. voice? Like, yeah. I, 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 I have nothing to say. Like, it's just Willingness. there for yeah. me. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Like, how am I supposed to tell you? Like, be more upset when you're being <laughs> inadequate. Like, yeah, yeah. Okay, because... I don't like, you shouldn't be upset. You should feel upset, right? And like, that's yes. the thing. That's the thing. Like, and I, I really want to make that distinction because yes. it's like, yes. it's not like you're like, like flipping over tables and yeah. like <laughs> punching holes in the wall. It's just that feeling that you get in that moment, mm -hmm. right? And then that's what kind of pushes you of to get, like start doing those things, yeah. right? But I think, I think what might be a problem for you, right? And like, maybe I'm mm -hmm. wrong about this. And like, I even find myself in this too. It's like, when you're doing things, you bring that pressure with you. Right. And so I think, I know this isn't like a parallel to compliments, right? But I think since, since that has such a weight over you, right? It's impacting you constantly, mm. right? And so you're super attached to it. Not saying you in specific, I'm just saying like in this example, uh, right? Like, I definitely yeah, yeah, Okay, okay. <laughs> like, I, I don't want to like but, say yeah. anything. Um, like that resonates yeah, too okay. hard. <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm like, 
Yeah. Well, shit. <laughs> well. Okay. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, so you bring that pressure into you, right? And yeah. it's like, it's part of who you are, yeah. right? And it's just like, it's just when you, it, at least the way I think about it is, it's just like the more you focus on it, right? The more that you're going to feel it, right? So you have to, to the best of your abilities, take it out of like your quote unquote conscious awareness. Yeah. And then let that kind of yeah. dissipate, right? But like, I understand how you do that, yeah. right? Like, there's this thing called an off switch. Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. It's you, not know it. you know what's weird about it? I feel like, and I feel like this is weird about me in so many, like, I, this comes up in so many ways, like, where, where most people feel like they don't like something, I, like, sickly like the fact mm. that, like, it feels just, like, uncomfortable. Like, I don't know why. I'm like, I love when I'm sitting, like, like, if I'll, this happens, like probably like once a week, probably two or three times a week, probably actually more realistic um, where like I'll go and I'll go to post something on Instagram or on TikTok and immediately it throws you into the reels and I'll sit there for like 10, 20 minutes and like scroll. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll do it too. And yeah. so I'm like, I'm like, you're a fucking piece of shit. <laughs> yeah. And I know like, it, uh, like I know I'm talking to myself like shit, last night. but I'm like, except it was porn. Was it's crazy it? to think, it's crazy to think that most, first off, first off, over 75% of the internet is porn. Crazy stat. Fucking Jordan Peterson whipped it out. I was like, wow, dude. What? I'm like, granted, I don't know the research on it. I, I would trust it. I trust Peterson. it. And yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh my God. Anyways, most men could totally relate to you on that. Most men can't relate to you on the fact that they are not refusing to beat their meat that are not watching porn that are not sitting there scrolling through TikTok. like one of the first things that like my friends noticed about me once i started making my life better was like they couldn't send me you know bitches on tiktok anymore not that i'm like fuck like bro like obviously i'm fucking like i'm a horny dude and i fucking had my mistakes of yep. fucking yep but <laughs> that was one of the big things for me it was like i'm not mm. idolizing women like that anymore like Still, i man. like i love women but I'm no, no more like, no more like yes. And I'm not, God. I I don't want to well, come generally. I'm not generally. talking on my fucking high horse here. No, like, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I have plenty of faults. And if you're listening to this and you know me, Trust you're gonna be me, like, Jason makes, and I have conversations all not, the time. Yeah, all, yeah, all the fucking time. All the time. All the time. All the time. Where all we time. put women on a pedestal. You yes. Know? So all I'm we're saying not is like, yes. innocent. Yes. <laughs> you're very guilty. Christ. But it's more of just like I'm choosing not to consume content of women shaking their ass anymore. Yeah, it's, because it is so bad for you. And I will say this as a PSA for all young men. If you find yourself in a position where you, as an average dude who doesn't make hundreds of millions of dollars, who isn't a six foot five fucking model, and is just like everybody else, which is normal and totally fine, but you find yourself in a position where, Jesus Christ, why am I bouncing around anymore? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> If you're a young man and you find yourself in a position where you're not finding women attractive anymore, stop watching porn. Yeah, absolutely. Bro. Stop scrolling on TikTok. Stop scrolling on Instagram Reels and looking at bitch after bitch after bitch. It's awful for your brain because I've run, I've, dude, I cannot tell you how many dudes I've run into that are always like, man, eh, she's not attractive. Man, eh, she's not attractive. Man, eh, she's not attractive. Everyone has their own taste, and I get that. But if you only find the absolute dime pieces attractive, it's because you're filling your brain with shit. You're watching too much porn. You're watching too many girls on TikTok and Instagram shaking their ass. Because now your standard for who's good looking is way out of proportion. Oh, yeah. Way yeah, yeah. out of proportion. And it will fuck you up. Oh, yeah. And the ironic part is most of these dudes that are saying, meh, she's not cute, meh, she's not cute, are all the same dudes who are virgins and have never been in relationships before. It's not a coincidence. It's not. And if you find yourself in this position, and I'm talking to you motherfuckers, if you find yourself in this position where you're a young man and you don't find any women attractive anymore unless they're the one, you got to look at what the fuck you're putting in your brain. You really, really do. Because now, as a man in your 20s in college, you have access to more hot women in a span of 30 seconds than the best, richest, biggest kings did in all of history did before the 2000s. You have more access to, to that many hot women. You have more access than Genghis Khan did, who fucking procreated half of China. It, it, just at your fingertips. It's dangerous. 
And if you don't treat it that way, you're going to fuck yourself up. And you're going to settle for relationships with girls that are only hot, that are toxic. Like, there's so many problems that we can yeah. get into. I know we have to wrap the shit up. But I'm just yeah, saying, like, yeah. if you're a young man, get off the shit. Get off the sauce, chief. Yeah, 100%. So, yeah, just yeah. a PSA. But, yeah. 